So what initially drew us to do these type of videos? Well, actually, it's one of the first things we wanted to do when we started the channel is promote the shops because obviously the more well-known shops were um, getting a lot of support off YouTubers, um, a lot of yeah. promotion and, and free gifts going out, etc., etc. And there would seem to be, whenever you'd mention a model shop, it would be one of you know the bigger names. When I was growing up, there were model shops <laughs> were everywhere. Really were everywhere, weren't they? I mean, I could, even... <laughs> There was one in the village where I grew up near enough. It was very popular. People used to go all over the world to buy stuff from there. They used to specialise in O-Gage. And there was a couple in Manchester and there also a couple more on the outskirts of Manchester. Where, you know, very, very popular. Those have all disappeared. And funnily enough, there's one there. Beaties, national <laughs> chain of model shops, long gone. And what we didn't want to happen was for the, the smaller shops, which can offer something that the, you know, the bigger ones can't, they're actually more local to a lot of people. I think we're still spoiled in the north in having quite a few shops. We the are. comments we get on the videos are, oh, I wish I had so many shops as you up there, blah, blah, blah. And then at one time they mentioned they had, but they've gone. Mm. So by doing this, we're just trying to say, look, pop into your local model shop. A video is the best way of doing it. You can see the people, you can see what's there and you can see what it's like. It's a great advert. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's so nice to meet all these people then because mm. everybody's so lovely in these shops, so helpful, knowledgeable, you know, yeah. with all sorts. A lot of them fix things, you know, they'll do the repairs and all sorts. So, you know, it's not just about what's there, what's mm. in stock, you know. And personally, if I'm spending, well, you know, we don't like spending money. <laughs> you know, we buy anything. I like to go and, and look at it. And they have a layout in the shops where you can actually run it. And I find, you know, when, when we've spoken to the shop owners, if people have bought something and they come back with it, if this is an issue, it's just sorted. It's not... Mm. It's not and there's no big, risk, is there? No, no, not at all. If anybody's been to our, to our Facebook group, you'll know I've stopped people. I don't want people selling on there because there's so many scammers online. Yeah. There's actually a group which I put a link to, which is all about bad model railway sellers. Oh? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they like to name it something rude, but they haven't. So it's just a heads up to people. You know, they all look genuine until you've had that experience and then you can obviously tell somebody else, which is what happens with that group. Yeah, and it's such a shame, isn't it? You know, it's, mm. it gives the whole thing a bad name, you know, and you, get, you have a bad experience and it puts you off. Yeah. I mean, another thing is obviously the retail trade, the high streets, they're all suffering for various reasons. People don't go out like they used to they don't you know they don't go to the pub anymore do they no <laughs> well we do well, we can <laughs> not as often as we'd like though i thought your point most is in a signal box look ah just lift it off yeah that's good why though, not? Isn't it? yeah that's yeah. a good idea you got them in the red there maroon Ah, that's 26 pounds. And I was looking at this. Stuart. All right. I've never seen a Stuart. How much is Stuart? Stuart's in? 40, but Stuart's DCC fitted. Ah. Makes a difference though, doesn't it? Just obviously. Was it 39 really there, then 49 there? So it's... Possibly sure. I think it might be... It's actually Bikeman, not Hornby. All right. Once their Bachman did a junior range, I think that's the, what that is, and they're quite rare. The um, Bachman junior ones. Right. No box, but £10. I've just found another one. What's that? £10, no box, but yeah. already done. I've just seen this as well. We've also got a Greg. No. <laughs> Again, a Bachman. You've got Greg and Stuart. Right. I think Greg's the nicer one. <laughs> Although Stuart's blue. Yeah. These are a bit like Percy. This is like that mallard we got. You know, we got on display. Oh, yes. It's like an ex Backman molding. Do you do? We didn't look at this. That's. You got some this train. There's a wagon. That above though, what's that? That's, that's, the yellow thing is such, that's it's not, a crane. 
container truck that lifts things the containers off they clip onto there and it lifts them with that ah now that's more interesting more my sort of thing right uh -huh, okay thank you yeah i like that i like things that do stuff yeah well lima were good at making containers and things you can actually do stuff with yeah the problem is you probably have to detail it a bit if you were going to put it on a proper railway very toy like let me move this move that book look at that <laughs> lighted with two hand painted figures it reminds me of something we've seen on a real well a heritage railway the red one yeah we bought that did oh, we yeah we did we bought one what's this Mechanical turtle. Ah. I like that. <laughs> oh, look. Tunnels. Can you see that? The it's bridge still... and the double track tunnel, yeah. No, it's right in front of you. Oh, sign. You see it's scrolling. Yeah. yeah, good those, aren't they? Aren't they? Mm. And this is something I've not seen before. <laughs> a mod scooter with a with a sidecar. See it? Keep still. Have a look. There we go. You can see the little sidecar. Unusual, not what you mm. expect. Huh? Ah, can you put that back, please? Set there, look. Ooh, what have got up here? Well, it's Stuart, but he's in a set. Ah. Nice to see him doing a bit of work in it. With his wagons yeah. and that. Oh, a lot oh. of good sets up there, Flying Scotsman. Valley Drifter. Five for Crimson one. King look. Put all the blue ones here for you. Um, I've seen that one. That's the brake van. Midland brake van. And this is what's called a pillbox brake van. All oh, right. We've got here, there's a turntable, a Pico turntable. Oh, there's one in front of you as well, mm. a Hornby so one. The, yeah, so this is all your, your Hornby buildings now. Brand new, still making it. Yeah. Paul's book, which is featured in our video from the Mount Tabor Model Railway Exhibition. Gone out this morning. There's a Thomas one here. Ah. Do you know, it's one of those shops, you walk round, then you walk round again and see something else, different, newer. Well, I'm not newer. that tall, so I'm not on <laughs> level with a lot of these. But yeah, we see so many train sets. These are train sets, you yeah. know. But, um, I'm not going to get them down. We've got a Flying Scotsman one. See, yeah. I had a, one of my first sets was a Flying Scotsman one. Should we go round here? More paints. Oh, what's that one? No idea. Steam one. Oh, a traction engine, yeah. Mm. Go on, what would you charge to drive home in? What, what's these about? I'm not... Are these... I think it's a range Hornby brought out a couple of years ago using the old double O name, you know, for die cast vehicles. And what's that? Is that the usual? It's an Allegro <laughs> estate, yeah. We've got one of those, haven't we? We have. I don't know what colour ours is. All these police cars. Over the years. Mm. Cavalier. <laughs> You've got your engaged ones here. <laughs> They're so tiny, aren't they? Really need to. I just lose them. Need to put my specs on when seeing some of these characters, because really tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, one of the things you get at the model shop, as we said, is really helpful advice. And at WD Models, I'll put some dates on the screen now. They actually have this gentleman, Paul, writer of this fantastic book and articles in various well-known model railway publications, yeah. to give you a lot of really good advice on your layout. Yeah. So in the future, we're going to see him again at an exhibition, and he's going to give us some advice on this disaster <laughs> here. 
but yeah, he's he's when we spoke to him, he was really really helpful and he's given free advice and that's the key. He has certain times where he'll go into the shop and he'll sit down with you for an hour and and help you with your your design and your layout and he has some wonderful ideas. Just, just make sure you buy something while you're there. <laughs> we did. But yeah, it's all good. It and and it's this sort of thing that you want from a shop, isn't it? It's hmm. that personal help and advice yeah. and if you get anything extra with it, do you know what? Why not? Next shop is the Loco Shed in Whitefield on the outskirts of Manchester. We met um, Jim, who we've seen at quite a few exhibitions in the past, haven't we? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been popping in there for years. We're meaning <laughs> to do a video. We've just never had the chance. But it was great to get down there and have a look round. There was so much in there. It's literally packed to the ceiling. You know, Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Talking that far off the ceiling. And we yeah. very nearly bought a blue Pullman. <laughs> We did, yes. And we will Nearly. get one at some point. We'll get one, definitely. <laughs> and we also saw his colleague, Paul. Very yeah. interesting chap. Has a lot to do with yeah. the East Lanks Railway, doesn't he? Yeah. He was telling us about the Kobo they're working on there. That is something we really want to see. And bye. <laughs> so this is um, the Loco Shed in Whitefield. Enjoy. Here we are at the Loco Shed in Whitefield, yet to open up. So we're gonna have a quick look around and um, just give you an idea of the layout of the shop. Pauline will obviously delve into the models with me later <laughs> on, but first of all, look at these big cabinets here. Oh, they are this. packed. Buses, trains, lots of lovely things here. You've got some Formula One cars Stop as well. Looking. All the older models, which are ideal for us. We'll have a look at that. Oh, I've seen a Ren box. Quick, turn away <laughs> before we buy some. Don't even started yet. Blackpool tram in there. More cabinets. There's a nice blue loco there. There's Thomas. Scale electric up there. Wow, this place is mm. rammed. <laughs> Scenic stuff, models, kits rather. There's Jim, the owner. Hey, Jim. <laughs> on tea duties at the moment what have you seen just having a good news it's bus i like the buses yeah because that's something you're just traveling all the time a train you travel on occasionally with buses but it's every day wasn't it if you move me bag paul you can go a bit for there's loads of engage on the end there that's unfortunately the engage is not in the best place we're going to redo the front of the cam cabinet soon Ooh, see some engage here love 56 50 they're nice. Rustins. Oh, little Rustins. We do like those. They do a blue one as well, don't they? And there's a blue terrier there, look. I really oh. like those, because you've got the brown one. Oh, yeah. And they do a blue one. I did say that, we're not seeing one for ages. That is nice, that. 129. That's the Rustins. It depends uh, which one it is, I think. It's 7.53. Yeah, they do vary in price, though. Yeah, no. For some reason. Yeah. Really nice. We've got a blue mallard at the top there. Right? Where are we looking? We're to your right, at the top. Oh, you can't miss that big one. <laughs> Very nice. Handsome. I chap. like it in that livery though. That's the needle thing. That we've got too many of them around anymore. It's the, the die cast one. one that was around, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coffee spotted. My favourite. Oh, that is nice. Very nice. So that's a reproduction of the old packaging with the modern loco but made in die cast metal. Oh, right, I see. It's like quite very rare. Oh, a green delta there, look. <laughs> the 37 next to it, 94 cleared. Oh my goodness, look at the work in yeah. that. So when you got it down, I, I just thought, oh yeah, it's a nice yeah, signal box. Yeah, but mm. you could put lighting in it as well, couldn't yeah. you? It'd be great. Yeah. Some yeah. people like it's incredible. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> How much is that, by the way? Twenty-one pounds. I think it's a very fair price. I think so it too. Works well into that. That's wow. the interior it'd cost you more than that. Either. Yeah. Would it? Pot belly stone. Is fantastic? <laughs> That's amazing. Well, mm. but yeah. It's a beauty. Yeah. All right. A beauty, isn't it? Put it on the uh, tell you what, boy, you can just pop it on that little, little space here. Why not? Put a bit of greenery there. Wow, right. Um, tankers, 
<laughs> one or two there. <laughs> Just one or two. Yeah, Pullmans. F1 car. We get in trouble if we show things like that, don't we? <laughs> oh, look at the end gate as well. Really nice. Mm. It's nice to see them, Dave. Look at this monster here. <gasps> it's a win win, that, isn't it? Oh, Blue fun. Dog 37. Yeah. I've seen you coming. <laughs> oh, you've even got a lovely sky blue Ligier F1 car. I believe you. Well, they're, they're a French team, and you can always tell with the sponsored by Gitan, you know, the, the French cigarettes. Oh. I think they had a couple of French drivers out here. Anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> this is all the vintage models. You've got an original TT31 there, Triang Dox Junta. Not great. Point be double Only because, yeah, you'll have to explain because there's a bit of a shine off the yeah, wonderful Some of those shiny. that you like. <laughs> and that's, um, yeah. Oh, open the cabinet. If you want to open oh, is it? Open, yeah. Okay, oh, cheers. Right. Open it up then. Just only because, just a bit so we don't get the shine off the. Uh, okay. I hate that. Just, just, oh, just open it a little. Do you want me to turn the spotlights off for a minute? No, mm. no, it's fine. I think Silly. we need the light. Get it's on. just the shine off the. Oh, look. So you got the red dock shunter. Oh. Which is very nice. And there's old Hornby Double at the bottom. That's a Graham Farish tank. That's a die cast metal one. That's nice. You've got the Hornby Double O Kobo. We do like those. We like everything, really, don't we? <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I want this and I want that. Well, it's not a matter of wanting everything because I want doesn't get, does it? We know that. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I'm a, a, a terrible child now. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's just like a uh, thing. Look at this old DMU. Anyway, so look in the bottom one. I mean, we can't get in that one. And that one at the top, that's like what we bought. And there's the other blue Pullman. So it's, it's what blue over white. Oh. That's the other livery they did. They're, all, they're still very popular. As a model, these are still very popular. It's not in mint condition, but for, for its age, it's in, it's in fair condition. It's not bad at all. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at it. Centre cars are the ones that, that are very sought after. I mean, that's pretty clean, really. That does look really clean, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, major scratches. It just needs to clean up more than anything else. Yeah. That's a lovely item, isn't it? Let's look at the trailer car. <laughs> the full yellow end version. The, the more popular version is the all-over blue one with the crest on it. But yes, it is, yeah. There. But it's not bad, really, for the yeah. age of it. Pretty tidy, no, no damage on it as such. Well, you're right, having the crest on the end does make a yeah, difference, yeah. doesn't it? But that's easy to and the power car ones, damage, isn't it, it? The crest, it is, yeah, they rub off quite easily. But uh, it was a smashing model that was done so many years ago and it's still got a, a massive following. It's a beauty, it's, isn't it's it? Lovely. Yeah, and a lot of people obviously still now don't realize they used to run into Manchester regularly and they were serviced at Reddish Depot, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's got a big, strong <laughs> yeah. connection to the northwest. And it's a shame they didn't bother preserving one. No, exactly. Yeah. Forerunner to the HST, of course, in the early 70s when it branched out to the Class 253 and 254, uh, but it was um, a smashing. It was quite popular. They're a bit underpowered, the real ones, weren't yeah, they? Were, yeah, Before, yeah. But they did, they did the job. They did. It's not like you, oh, she can ask that it, it does uh, what it's North, intended. Was it the man, man engine in them, Paul, wasn't it? These yeah. things. They yeah. didn't. Um, <laughs> It's a, bit of, it's a bit of a warm and an oil, doesn't it, really? Yeah. As it gets going, not bad. Yeah, it's smooth, that. I'm surprised. Yeah. You forget, don't you? Should we put the whole thing on? Give it a blast. For a Go bit. on, then. Yeah. Why not? Why not? We'll get that from the ground. Which is the other one? Oh, the other one's that's, got the crest. Yeah, yeah, oh, this that's one's that's got the crest, look, Pauline. That one. Ah, oh, right. Does that not have the crest? No, that's yellow at the end. Uh, it's a later one where they had to high visibility paint on the end. Right, OK. <laughs> Thing, isn't this? Nice to see. It is, isn't it? What a beauty! Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, very nice. Come <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> on. Are there any sweet shops around here, by the way? <laughs> Passing trade's always good, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes they pull and push each other off. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and the model shops you go in and you see things like that. <laughs> You've been let loose, loose you lot today. Isn't it? 
and it was very well designed. That's what's in the dock shunter, isn't it? Yeah. We just put the bogey in on, on some of the models. I don't know if it's the same on it's the same bogey, bogey, is it? Yeah. Yeah. But the very, very first one actually had an XO4 motor mounted on top of the bogey and it had a gear at the end which All right. drove onto a sham. And all these Pullmans here. Rosemary. It's a beautiful 2250. That is nice, isn't it? Yes, the rail road ones. They're, they're a good price as well, aren't they? And this, the 12 wheel dining car. <laughs> you know, it's on the bogies. It's got six wheels. Ah. You've got your older ones. You've got a few of those, haven't we? Oh. 17. And they still make them. You're putting it in the wrong way round. Oh. <laughs> Tidying up. <laughs> oh, look at these here. They're the old trying Hornby packaging. You've got the yellow plastic like Wren started using. Oh. And it cracks very easy. So you find yeah. it in good condition, like that. Yeah. Because the cardboard's really, really durable, but they have this plastic in them. That was best. Oh, there's so many in there. Right, so we've got an American. Oh. New York Central. It's really nice, isn't it? Oh, I've got a caboose on the back. I like a caboose. Yeah, good <laughs> There it is again. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? It's nice to see it all together because, you know, we don't often see them. Quiet. Yeah. The size of the, well, they call them box cars, don't they? Yeah. That was the loco shed in Whitefield. A lot of um, footage there. We didn't have the opportunity to put in the, the video we put out last week simply because there was um, so much of it. Yeah. And we never even got to, to look at everything. When I was actually editing back the video, there was a lot of things on there. I'm like, oh, I could have bought that. <laughs> Always the case though when you go mm. anywhere, isn't it? You know, mm. even when you, you look back at the exhibitions. Oh, it's terrible. Fairs, yeah. Oh, uh, people say to me when they're commenting on the video, oh, that was nice at two minutes, whatever. And I'm like... I was too busy filming to actually notice it. Yeah. I suppose it's a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, we, we pay money to get in these places and we spend a fortune. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah. It's costing us a small mm. fortune, but hey. Yeah, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to behave. But um, obviously the toy fairs and the, the shops can... You, people can think, well, I don't. You, you're going to these toy fairs, taking business off the shops. Well, most of the shops we go to do have stands at toy fairs and exhibitions as well. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll shut the shops on a Sunday and go out to a toy fair or a model railway exhibition. You know, if you go to a model railway exhibition as a trader, you know that's all there. People are going to buy, isn't it? Yeah. Really. So it's hard work for these guys. You know, they, they get there early in the morning, they're getting home late after packing up. And it's, as, I, as Jim was saying, it's not just what you see. There's so much going on behind the scenes, scenes you know, yeah. especially when you're doing the used stuff and buying the stock as well that must take you know so much of the time so it's well, yeah there's all like, like you said there's all the emails mm. you know it is the internet side of things yeah packaging I mean, when you look at some of these shops and how small the team is yeah it must be flat out yeah you know I and mean, when you're doing that you you want to make a um, good money doing it because it's so much hard work for, for any small business so yeah we're just happy to put these on the screen and we're getting good comments paying, oh, I didn't know that was there. I'll definitely pop along. And that's all we can expect, really. Yeah. We've got a couple more shops lined up. So we're looking forward to doing those. And um, we can't say who they are yet. But um, as soon as um, those videos are done, we'll get them up out on, um, on another Sunday morning. You can enjoy those as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.